So back when I first started reviewing Razer's weird, weird, weird ass controllers, one of the most common questions I got was, what are your binds? And my response would always be the most generic shit on the planet. It's all personal preference. Everyone's different. Hey, this is my get out of jail free card because I don't feel like explaining this right now. Lazy whore, I know. To a degree, what you do bind your buttons to uh, on your controller or your paddles, if you're one of those people, it is personal preference, but there are some tips I've acquired over the years that can help people who are struggling to find binds that suit them. Whether you're an elite controller or a Spectra gal, e-swap guy, a custom DualSense balling douchebag, what the fuck? These tips will apply universally to us sweats who are using controllers with extra paddles or buttons. So grab your shitbird, whatever shitbird you've decided to buy yourself, and try to keep up. Your button binds are entirely dictated by the games you play, but also the binds that those games share. For instance, most games will use X or Square for reload. The main questions that you need to be asking yourself when you're starting to set up binds or when you're switching binds are, what are the most commonly used buttons that take your thumbs away from your thumbsticks and how important are those buttons? This will help narrow down the amount of options you have for button binds, and it's very important that the binds that you're looking at are binds that help keep your thumbs on your thumbsticks, which makes you more accurate in the long run. Chances are, the most commonly used button on the planet is probably going to be the A button if you're one of those guys, the X button if you're one of those guys, or the B button if you're a fucking child. In my opinion, the most commonly used binds are going to be the most comfortable on the side of your dominant hand. For me, that's going to be my right. So in pretty much every single scenario with every controller I own, the bottom right button, providing it's a four button or four paddle controller, is going to be A. And for every two button controller, A is always going to be on the right button. It's very, very commonly used. It's a button I on occasion need to spam, and it's a lot easier with my right hand. So in modern war- now that I brought it up, I need to get fucking gameplay. In Modern Warfare, using something like the Power Ray Spectra, for example, A would obviously go on the right button, and then on the left, I would have my B button so I could slide cancel. This would mean when I'm fighting people, I don't actually have to take my thumbs off the thumbsticks. This would make me insanely accurate, very useful binds. Uh, I still die to the cunt laying on the floor prone in the dark corner because, you know, he's just a New York subway sewer rat. All of your games revolve around hiding in corners. I hate all of it. And I won't bitch too much more because I do, I do a fair amount of bitching on this channel. But this game is a dirty jizz sock full of cow shit. Please go away. <laughs> the buttons I would mainly focus on when choosing your binds or when choosing new binds are mainly, again, the buttons that you use via taking your thumbs off of the thumbsticks, which are mainly going to be the action buttons, but in some scenarios, they can be the D-pad buttons. Or, and here's another option, you could bind your buttons or paddles to the thumbstick click action, which might actually help increase the longevity of your thumbsticks, potentially delaying stick drift. You see, you got quite a few options here. And when choosing new options or choosing your first set of binds, please be sure to not be that asshole who, who uses the controller for a day, says I can't use the controller, gives up, goes to write a negative review on Amazon. You, those type of people, if you're one of those type of people, fuck you, you make my job harder. And you're also just kind of an asshole. Give them time, let them breathe. You might get used to them. If you don't, it's fine. You can just change your binds. And please do keep in mind that just because some controllers have four paddles, or four buttons. That does not mean you have to use all of them. This is not a dick swinging contest. If you're really good at games using just one or two paddles, there's no shame in just using one or two paddles. Even if you're just using one paddle, you are still getting use out of the controller you bought because you had to pay that amount of money even just for one paddle. It's all worth it at the end of the day. If you trick yourself into thinking that at the end of the day, it's actually not worth it. Mouse and keyboard's a much better alternative. Run away, run away now. If you have a paddle controller or a button controller and you only want to use one or two at first, this is actually a great idea as this is how I learned to use four paddles on my Elite controller. I started out with two, eventually upgraded to three, and then four. In some games, I still only use one or two, but with most games, I've upgraded to using three or four. Beautiful, right? All right, now, there's this consistent complaining I hear from people uh, about not being able to grip your controller like you're in Alabama and it's your brother's dick. You guys like to grip your controllers 
Like, it's the World Cup, and it's just the most important thing on the planet. The problem with Pro Controllers is there's buttons or paddles down there. Do you see where I'm going with this? Of course you do, because anyone with a brain could tell that maybe you just need to be graceful with the controller. I've noticed this with my controllers because I have a billion of them. I've noticed uh, over time, I'm very, very light with the way I hold them and you kind of need to be. If you aren't, you're gonna accidentally press the paddles or buttons on the bottom. People just don't understand that this is something that you're going to need to do. You're going to need to learn to be graceful when holding your controllers and this is of course going to affect your entire grip. Look at this comparison between me holding a controller with and without paddles. Without paddles, you're able to grip the entirety of the bottom of the controller. You can't do that when you have buttons or paddles down there. This completely changes up your play style. If you're going to be moving to a pro controller, it's going to be very, very drastic. And quite frankly, you're not gonna to wanna to switch back once you're, you've gotten here. It's going to be a very expensive hole uh, of a hobby. So make sure if you're accidentally pressing buttons, be more graceful. And also make sure if you're gonna be doing this, you really want to. It gets really, really pricey, really, really fast. These things aren't reliable. So I'm pretty sure what you guys have learned from this video is all these little, these little stupid, stupid, stupid fucking things affect how you perform in game with a controller, with paddles or buttons. So much so that there's literally an infinite amount of paths you can take to find suitable binds for you. In some cases, the binds work. In some cases, they don't. And in some cases, and this is important to keep in mind, your controller might not work for you. That's okay. Utilize the 14 or 30 day return policy to return the controller after giving it a fair shot. And if you can't use it, don't. Return it and put the money towards another controller. On the Xbox side of things, there is an infinite amount of pro controllers. On PlayStation, I don't even think, I don't think I've seen a singular PS5 like pro controller. Not custom pro controller, like a scuff controller, no normal pro controller like the elite that's a video for another day anyways you have options this looks bad do not force yourself into using something that's uncomfortable because you don't want to inconvenience yourself or you're like oh it's fine no it's not fine return it and go get something that's better i promise i, I have a, quite a few videos coming up where i'm going to be comparing some controllers that are more on the budget end of things so for those looking for a pro controller experience that you know don't want to pay pro controller prices 150, 180, 250 dollars. If you don't want to pay those prices, keep an eye out for those videos. And I'll also be live streaming tomorrow, providing I get this video edited today. So if you guys want to talk about uh, some controller recommendations, I'll be discussing on live stream. I always I have a playlist for the live streams that are private from the channel or unlisted, I should say. When streaming, I will be discussing some controllers I'm going to be having on the channel in the future. Uh, there's this one Hall Effect controller i'm very excited to review they're sending it out to me meaning anti-stick drift as hell i got the victrix gambit review that's going to be going up sometime we'll be talking about that on stream too bunch of other shit so if you're interested in that you want to ask me some questions uh call me a mcfly wannabe then go ahead and do that by the way this lego set plus this badass website that made these arms as well as this head and afro mean I'm going to have my own Lego minifigure soon. Cinematics are going to be real cool looking soon. Now how about I make you an offer? If you enjoyed this video, you hit the red button and or the gray button and turn it blue. Shitty fucking proposition. I wouldn't take it. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.